very closely with code um, just to kind of things that we can't deal with often after reaching out to code we realize that code can enforce things like junk motor vehicles on private property um, camping on private property so working with code that's a thing we do daily if not weekly uh, we also do work with the mayor and the city council and just kind of talk to our council members and kind of see what they're doing and what's going on that feeds into planning and zoning where we're uh, always trying to keep tabs on kind of how our neighborhood is changing and shifting uh, one of the main streets i have is hemp hill and hemp hill just changed dramatically for the first time in a long time and just became a two-way lane or i guess one way going both uh, directions and that really kind of threw people off for a while there so we're just always kind of trying to keep track on what the major changes in the neighborhood are with things even like that. So, cosas con que ayudan los MPOs, tratamos de hablar con los neighborhood associations o todos los diferentes um, organizaciones que uh, están en los barrios. También trabajamos con muchos de los diferentes grupos que, como el Code Blue, que tratan de bajar todos los, uh, todo el crimen en los barrios. Uh, trabajamos con todos los diferentes businesses, con todos los diferentes tiendas y restaurantes en los, en los barrios y también uh, trabajamos en, con los diferentes uh, apartamentos que están en los barrios y hablamos con el management y tratamos de bajar todos uh, lo, los crímenes que está pasando en el, uh, los apartamentos. Trabajamos con Code para tratar de... Um, uh, para diferentes, diferentes cosas que los otros no podemos enforzar Code sí lo pueden enforzar. So, trabajamos con ellos um, mucho para, para ayudar a los, los diferentes barrios. You're good. You can go. Uh, so, special events. Anytime there's any sort of uh, big community events going on in whatever neighborhood, whenever you see officers there, typically it's going to be MPOs that are there. That is one of our big duties is to be that police presence that's plugged in directly to different um, community uh, events that are going on. Obviously, there's not a lot happening right now, but prior to this, you know, there are events monthly, if not almost every, you know, weekly that MPOs are regularly making appearances at, showing up, meeting people, and just letting people know that the police department is here for them, we're involved, and that uh, we want to hear whatever's kind of going on in, in the neighborhood. Uh, Los MPOs van a muchos diferentes eventos por toda la ciudad um, y cuando, you know, cuando están pasando los eventos, si ves un oficial ahí, normalmente va a ser un MPO, porque nosotros somos los que vamos a comunicar con la gente, you know, a ver qué está pasando, a ver con qué uh, necesitan ayuda los, los la gente que va a los diferentes um, eventos. Ahorita no está pasando muchos eventos, pero cuando hay eventos, si ves un oficial ahí, normalmente va a ser un MPO. So, as far as crime trends, um, one of the things that I do weekly and that most MPOs should be doing is going through our weekly reports, reading what's going on in the neighborhood, keeping track of crime trends. Are there regular burglaries happening on a particular street of different motor vehicles? Are there businesses that keep getting burglarized over and over and over? Things like that. And we're also communicate with detectives every now and then because we do like to do victim follow-ups with people that have been the victim of a major crime, like maybe a robbery. I had somebody in my neighborhood that was robbed in the very early morning days at gunpoint, and that unfortunately resulted in um, the, <laughs> fortunately that citizen was shot during that robbery. And what my job was to do was to follow up on that, talk to them, see how they're doing, see if they've had contact with the detective yet, and just let them know that the police department does care, we are paying attention. So. I follow up on, on quite a bit of that. Um, una de las responsabilidades de los MPLs son que uh, hablar con los víctimas de crímenes y hablar con los víctimas y a ver cómo están haciendo, uh, a ver si están hablando con los detectivos y um, lo más para enseñar a los víctimas que es al, al, al departamento de Fort Worth que sí les importa qué lo pasó a ellos y que queremos comunicar con ellos y queremos saber cómo están haciendo y queremos hacer todo para que podemos hacer para ayudarlos después de que pasa un asunto o cualquier tipo de crimen. So some of the programs that we work with, Code Blue, I've talked about that a bit already. Um, 
we're always trying to recruit more club blue members. The more eyes we have out in the different neighborhoods driving around patrolling is always better. They do go through, through they do go through quite a bit of training whenever they're uh, going through the code blue program. So it's definitely not a hey, just go drive around and call in whatever. They have training, they have protocols to keep them safe in order to make sure that they're being effective and that even more importantly than being effective, they're not putting themselves in danger um, through anything that they're doing. Ministers Against Crime is another program that we work with, and that also ties in with the Clergy and Police Alliance. We do have ministers that regularly ride out with police officers. Obviously, it's not happening right now because of COVID, but on an almost weekly or monthly basis, there are different ministers, clergymen from different churches all over the city um, that like to ride out with us so that if there are events that require some sort of spiritual need, um, the most common one of that is going to be a family member passing. Uh, that way, there's some sort of out, direct outreach that we have right there with us for um, situations like that. And then the Citizens Police Academy, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a, I forget the exact length of it, but it's a several week long police academy where people can participate and see the different uh, portions of policing. They can, the DAs come in, talk to them, different detectives from different units come and talk to them, and they just kind of can learn what all the individual units of the police department do do because there's quite a few different units and they try to get as many as they can to come in and teach the classes and talk to everybody so they know like what the different units look like and how they function um code blue you know yeah i've led a code blue code blue is cuando los, los citizens están uh caminando o manejando por sus diferentes barrios um para tratar de parar diferentes crímenes uh si los entrenamos para que cuando ellos están en las calles you know Tratando de proteger su, sus barrios y sus casas y los casas de sus vecinos. Uh, si los entrenamos para que todos los, a la gente que son en Code Blue, no se ponen en peligro y para que saben cómo uh, proteger su, sus barrios, pero cómo hacerlo sin, uh, sin ponerse en, en uh, peligro. Y también tenemos los Ministers Against Crime. Tenemos diferentes, um, hey Ruth, how would you say, I guess, pastor in Spanish? I'm not sure. Last sure. uh, Con los ministers against crime y con los clergy and police alliance, hay diferentes pastores de diferentes iglesias que vienen con nosotros y se suben en, en el carro con uno de los oficiales y ahí se quedan con el oficial por todo el uh, por todo el día. Y la razón que hacemos eso es porque en eventos que piensan que el pastor puede ayudar a una familia que a lo mejor perdía, you know, a lo mejor se murió el, um, oh, alguien de una familia. Ahí tenemos un pastor que inmediatamente pueden uh, hablar con la familia para tratar de ayudarlos en un tiempo que han perdido you know, alguien bien importante. Y también tenemos el Citizens of Police Academy. Si lo damos en inglés y en español, y además es un programa donde cualquier persona puede venir y puede ver todos los diferentes, um, todos los diferentes áreas del departamento de, de Fort Worth. Yeah, porque hay muchos diferentes departamentos, hay de detectives de robbery y detectives de vehículos robados y además hay muchos diferentes um, áreas que la gente no sabe que existan, pero con el Citizens Police Academy es, es una oportunidad para venir y a, aprender qué son todos esos diferentes áreas. So as far as uh, finding who out, finding out who your MPO is, uh, if you live in Fort Worth, you have an MPO. All you have to do is go to the search one address function on the Fort Worth website. If you type in your address, it will typically direct you right to your MPO. MPOs can shift around. Things happen like promotions. You know, people become detectives and they leave the position. And it can take a while for that position to get filled and then for that information to be updated. So it may not always be the most up-to-date MPO information. But it is there for you, and it'll get you on the right track to figuring out who your MPO is. Um, that that email listing right there is exactly how uh, you find the email of whatever your MPO is. You might have a neighbor who knows your MPO's name but doesn't know any contact information for them. If you just do that first dot last name at forwardtexas.gov, and as long as that is your MPO's correct name, it'll go straight to them. You can also attend a neighborhood association meeting or anything similar in your neighborhood. 
MPOs typically show up at those, or they show up as often as they can. I know I do. You'll usually find me at those. Um, as far as actually making contact with your MPO and kind of giving them whatever your issue is, you do need to give us time to make contact with that other party involved in our issue or make contact with whoever might give us a solution to your issue. We do have people reaching out to us pretty much every day for a variety of different things, and it just takes us time to sort through everything and um, get to your problem. But we do try to address absolutely everybody's issues as we get to it. And if you have anything that you feel like you're being ignored, if you have any other issues, you can always feel free to contact the supervisor, and the supervisor will work their way back down and contact the MPO. Sometimes we just miss you, but maybe you can get a hold of the supervisor, and that gets forwarded to us, and then we figure it out and, and go from there. Um, si estás buscando el MPO que trabaja en tu área, lo que puedes hacer es puedes ir a la website de Fort Worth, uh, City of Fort Worth, y donde dice Search One Address, puedes uh, poner uh, tu, el address tuyo de tu casa, y cuando pones eso, debe de, uh, debe de sacar el nombre y el número de teléfono y el email de tu MPO para que lo puedas contactar en ese punto. Si sabes el nombre de tu MPO, pero no, no tienes su número de teléfono o otra forma para contactarlo, aquí explica cómo jalan los emails uh, cuando trabajas para el ciudad de Fort Worth. So, si sabes que tu MPO es Omar Bustos, eh, su mi email va a ser you know, omar.bustos at forwardtexas.gov. Y también si tienes neighborhood associations, si vas a esos meetings, uh, muchas veces el MPO va a estar ahí en esos diferentes, diferentes meetings. Y cuando tienes problemas y, con, para, y cuando contactas tu, tu MPO con tu problema, por favor, lo más vale es tiempo para tratar de hallar un, un resolution. Porque um, hay gente todos los días que lo está hablando y están buscando sus MPOs porque tienen algo con que los podemos ayudar, pero lo más, lo, we need time. Necesitamos tiempo para uh, contratar a otra persona que a lo mejor el vecino que te está, que te está dando problemas o para contactar code o cualquier persona con que les pueda ayudar. Y si piensas que algo está mal con el MPO o no te gustó cómo te ayudamos o cualquier otro problema, por favor, contacta el supervisor del MPO y de ahí también podemos seguir tratando de ayudarte con tu problema con el supervisor mío. So your MPO should be help, uh, be able to help you regardless of your problem. Yes, uh, whether we can fix the problem directly uh, or you know use whatever our max power is to help you because we do do obviously have limitations. Um, or at the very least, we should be able to direct you in the right direction or reach out to the right person who will then get back to you to fix your problems. Uh, and I guess that feeds right into experts at finding the right resource. Like I said, we work with code. We work with a lot of different programs or a lot of different city programs, I guess. Or, departments in the city, so we should be able to figure out who is the person that can solve your problem eventually. And as it says at the bottom, we work with code, TPW, just whatever department is relevant to whatever the issue is. Um, con cualquier problema que, que tienes, el MPO, te debe de poder ayudar con ese problema. Uh, si los otros no te podemos ayudar, sí podemos hallar el departamento con la ciudad que te puede ayudar con ese problema. Some of those problems are problematic neighbors. That's something that we deal with pretty much every day. People just dealing with frustrating neighbors. We can make contact with those neighbors because oftentimes the person complaining about the neighbor has either tried to make contact and has not had good results, or they're a little weary because they're afraid of maybe something bad happening if they do make contact. Um, we do try to be that liaison, that middle position between neighbors that are kind of having disputes, just to at the very least make it safe for the for, for have a safe lane of contact if you're not willing to do that because you feel like it's unsafe. Trash and overgrowth, drugs and suspicious behavior, anything that is going on in the neighborhood, things like that, if you want, you can direct it to us. Drugs and suspicious behavior, that's things we can address directly. Trash and overgrowth, that might be something that we direct the code. You know, whatever the issue is, we can figure it out. Um, illegal parking, the good thing we talk about, that's a common issue we deal with almost every single day. When things are on city streets, MPOs can deal with that directly. When things are on private property, vehicles, obviously what I'm referring to, 
Um, if a vehicle is on a front yard, a backyard, or something like that, that's typically going to be something code deals with, but anything on the street, MPOs can help you with. Um, panhandlers, we deal with those almost daily. And then any sort of crime issues you feel like you have, you can always vent those and send those our way. And we'll try and address them by reaching out to patrol and other different departments within the, the police department that address things like narcotics or property crimes, stuff like that. We'll, you send it to us, we can send it the right way to them, and they can hopefully start to address the different issues. Um, si tienes problemas con vecinos, una, una de las cosas que gente siempre está reportando es que tienen problemas con un vecino que a lo mejor tienen música que está bien recio y lo tienen, eh, no paran la música hasta la noche. Pero la persona que está hablando no quieren hablar con el vecino porque tienen miedo, no se sientan confortables hablando con ese vecino. Um, eso es algo con que te puedo ayudar. You know, yo puedo hacer contacto con ese vecino para tratar de ayudar al problema y um, no te tienes que poner en peligro si te sientes que es algo que no, no eres confortable haciendo. Um, si tienes gente you know, sospechoso caminando por el barrio, um, si piensas que hay un casa que está vendiendo drogas, diferentes problemas así, yo puedo comunicar con los diferentes departamentos adentro del de, de, uh, force. Uh, con los otros, los otros departamentos dentro de la policía, um, departamentos como narcóticos o los uh, property crimes, los oficiales contra, que trabajan con los crímenes de propiedad, para que pueda hablar con ellos, para que ellos puedan a, ayudar con esos diferentes problemas también. Si tienes problemas con vehículos que están parqueados en la, en la calle, yo puedo ayudar con eso. Si tienes carros que no se mueven por semanas o meses y que se quedan a frente de diferentes casas, si quieres reportar eso, yo soy el, el que puede um, ayudar con ese problema. Y también cualquier um, diferente crimen o, o problemas que ves en el barrio, si me quieres hablar, yo puedo ayudar con hallar, um, yo puedo ayudar con esos problemas. Y si no puedo hallar, si no te puedo ayudar, yo sé con, con quién puedo hablar para arreglar esos problemas. So some of the things I guess you can do to start kind of getting in contact, if you have a neighborhood association, ask them to hold crime prevention class. That's something I can lead or we can lead as MPOs. Um, joining a neighborhood watch or Code Blue. Ideally, I would recommend Code Blue because we do, like I said, offer training uh, to make really just to make sure that you're being effective and that you're being as safe as you can be. And then just cameras. Cameras are something I really, really promote to people. Cameras are everything. If you have cameras on front of your house, you can't even comprehend the amount of things you will catch on that camera. And once you're the victim of a burglary or even uh, someone stealing a box off your porch that you ordered off Amazon, things like that, those cameras are absolutely everything in identifying who those people are. If we can't identify actors, then that's a really hard thing for us to go off of if we can't even have an image of them. So I recommend cameras to absolutely everybody in whatever neighborhood you are. Um, si no tienes un, uh, si tienes un neighborhood association, yo pienso que debes de ir a, a ellos y le quieres pedir que nosotros podamos poner un crime prevention class para que podamos ir y hablar con, con ustedes para explicar qué puedes hacer para parar los diferentes crimen, uh, crímenes que pasan en el barrio. Si quieres, también quiero, uh, pienso que es una buena idea que la gente uh, se mete con el programa de Code Blue. Uh, Code Blue sí es bien efectivo para parar mucho crimen en los diferentes barrios y más que parar los crímenes, pero también te enseñamos cómo hacer todo para que no te, no te pones en peligro. Puedes ser efectivo, pero no te vas a poner en ningún tipo de peligro como los otros que vamos a entrenar. Y también uh, yo pienso que toda la gente debe tener cámaras en sus casas. Si tienes cámaras, con cámaras podemos uh, identificar a la gente carros, um, las cámaras son todo para ayudar en cachar diferentes personas con todos los uh, actos crímenes que están haciendo en el barrio. Entonces, si no tienes cámaras, yo pienso que debes de tener cámaras en tu casa. And I guess that's my email. That's my city cell phone right there. And um, I guess any questions or follow up? I don't think that we have any questions on 
our Facebook Live or on the chat. But I'm placing your contact information um, in both areas. So if you do need to get in contact with Officer Bustos, um, this contact information has been put in the chat and on the comments area um, for the Neighborhood Association page. And no miro que haya preguntas para el oficial Bustos, pero he puesto su información de contacto en el chat y también he puesto su información de contacto en el los comentarios en Facebook. Um, you do have a question that came up um, that asked why you decided to become an MPO. So la pregunta es, uh, ¿por qué el oficial Bustos decidió convertirse en un oficial de patrulla de vecindario? Um, actually, because uh, I had the opportunity to be an MPO for the neighborhood I grew up in. So I am from the Rosemont neighborhood. I lived there my whole life up until the last six years. My parents and family still live there. So it was an opportunity to just participate in a neighborhood that I love, that has a lot of opportunity, that has been um, a challenging neighborhood at times. You know, I grew up there in the 90s and early 2000s, and it wasn't always the best. But there is a lot, so much potential for that neighborhood, and I had a lot of fun there, and I had a good childhood there. And now I have a chance to participate in watching that neighborhood hopefully improve with the neighborhood revitalization program. So, I mean, it just, it means a lot to me to be able to be an MPO for where I grew up and hopefully improve that area. So, or be part of that area improving. Okay. And... Uh, can you share an example of an experience you've had building community as an MPO? Sure. So um, I've developed a really, really good relationship with, in particular, um, one of the restaurants over off Hemphill. And just being in, in communication with that restaurant, letting them know that it's a restaurant that is employed by mainly Spanish-speaking employees. And they'll occasionally have issues because of the homeless population around Hemphill. And they don't like to, you know, historically, the Rosemont neighborhood under reports crime. And I've been able to be a really good contact point for that restaurant that deals with a lot of different issues just with the homeless population in the area. They feel comfortable calling me, as do a couple different businesses feel comfortable calling me where they might not report something, but they'll call me directly. I wish they would call 911 because then we have better logs or I, I might not always be available to answer my cell phone. But, and if you call 911, I can, I might see that call come up on the call screen, and then I can address it directly. But I've had multiple different businesses that wouldn't be comfortable calling 911. Now they feel comfortable at least direct calling me and addressing me directly, and I can head over and start to deal with their issues, where normally they might not even call at all. So I've, I've seen that start to happen quite a bit, and that's been good. Looks like we have another question. Um, how often do you ride patrol? Um, how often do you ride or patrol the neighborhood? So la pregunta es qué tan frecuente um, el oficial va alrededor de su vecindario. And don't forget to translate. Oh yeah, uh, I'm driving the neighborhood every single day. That's that's me personally. I'm not much of an office person. Uh, I do like to drive around the neighborhood pretty much every single day, so that if things are happening in the neighborhood, I can respond quickly. Hopefully, I'm a couple blocks away or at the very least on the other side of the neighborhood, and I can still get there fairly quickly. But I, I'm not much of a desk and office guy. I do like to be in my car driving around. I'm always driving around the neighborhood pretty much every single day, unless I have to be in the office addressing other things and stuff like that. Um, yo siempre estoy manejando por el barrio. Todos los días me gusta estar ahí. Yeah. No me gusta sentar en, en la oficina mucho. Me gusta estar afuera. Me gusta estar manejando por the, todas las diferentes calles, por el wayside y por el butler y, for the South Adams, yo siempre estoy más manejando y, uh, you know, pasando todas las calles y checando en todas las diferentes tiendas que tengo y um, yo, yo siempre estoy en, en, en el barrio. We had another question come in. Um, can you talk about the fear that the undocumented folks face contacting the police and how you may be able to help. So la pregunta era, uh, ¿puede hablar el oficial 
del miedo que tienen los que no son documentados en contactar la policía y cómo puede ayudar. Yeah, so with that, I, I want to say, if uh, offense has happened to you, if you are a victim, if you've been assaulted, if you've been burglarized, if whatever the offense has happened to you and you feel like you need police, you are a victim, please call. That as far as, you know, being an, an undocumented person and the Ford Police Department goes, there's not a police officer on this department you will talk to who is worried about that, who will make that an issue. We're here to help you. If you are a victim, please be a victim and let us help you. Let us do the report. Let us make the arrest if we need to make the arrest on whoever. But there, I've been here for four and a half years and I have not heard a single officer ever say that as being an issue. We're, we're here to help people. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference to us. We don't even ask that question really ever. It, it's irrelevant to what we do. We're there to, to help out in whatever the call is. So even if you're undocumented, like, please call if you need help. Um, si no eres documentado y vives en Fort Worth, en cualquier área de Fort Worth, no importa dónde, por favor habla. Si te ha pasado algo, si alguien te ha asaltado, si te han robado, si te robaron tu carro, si te metieron a tu casa, you know, cualquier cosa que te ha pasado, si un acto crimen te ha pasado, por, por favor habla. You know, los otros, los, los oficiales de Fort Worth no están preocupados con si alguien es documentado o, son, o si no es documentado. En, ya ha, trabado, uh, ha trabajado aquí cuatro años y medio y yo nunca he hablado con un oficial que está preocupado con eso. Nosotros estamos aquí para ayudarte. Si algo te ha pasado y necesitas policía, por favor, habla. Eso no es problema con nosotros. I don't see any more uh, questions coming in, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jarrell with uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Tarrant County so that he can talk to us about some of the community resources um, that he has to offer the community. Cool. Thank you, Ruth. Again, my name is Jarrell Blunt, and I am the Senior Director of the Coming Up Program with Boys and Girls Club of Greater Tarrant County. Uh, also with me, I have the Site Director of the site most closest to Rosemont area, Ms. Sherry Hudson, if you're on the calendar. Do I need, how you want to translate? Do you want me to pause, Ruth? Or? Yeah, sorry, I forgot my job for a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, and Israel, what y está con el, la organización del Boys and Girls Club y también con él está Sherry, que es su supervisora de el sitio más cercano a la área de Rosemont. So we are a special program within the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Tarrant County. Uh, so the typical idea of Boys and Girls Club as an after school, uh, that's a part of the, of the club, but we are a special program within the Boys and Girls Club. So once the normal, what you think of Boys and Girls Club closes at six or seven o'clock, depending on where we are. We pick up and we open and we are open from uh, Monday through Friday from seven to 11 p.m. So, parte de ser del programa de Boys and Girls Club uh, no es de horas regulares de ocho a cinco, sino que también están abiertos en horas más tardes. Um, can you repeat the last part you said for me, please? Uh, Open to 7, 11 p.m. Once the daytime closes, we open up. Uh, también están abiertos um, en horas más tardes, de las 7 a las 11 de la tarde, uh, para poder ayudar a diferentes estudiantes y jóvenes. So as Officer Bustos talked about earlier with CCPD, we are actually a CCPD funded program underneath Partners with a Shared Vision. And part of that, uh, part of the mission is to have the increased safety of residents and youth decrease crime in the city of Fort Worth, decrease juvenile crime, uh, decrease violent crime, and decrease gang-related activities. So, como mencionó el oficial Bustos, ellos también son parte de la subvención de CCPD, um, que ayuda a darle fondos a esta organización que ayuda a reducir el crimen y violencia entre jóvenes y entre pandillas um, dentro del vecindario. 
So that is what we are charged with doing um, to impact lives of the at-risk and gang-involved youth ages 13 to 24. Also, uh, that is our target audience, 13 to 24-year-olds who may be subject to gang affiliation, may actually be gang affiliated, uh, and giving them a safe space to come uh, in order to try to create some new norms with them, give them recreational activities, a place to go. Um, the win is always to get them in the building and off the streets so they won't, they won't have to be in the neighborhood causing officers to boost us to work even harder. Uh, we are trying to figure out some, some new norms, like I said before, for them to do and to adopt in order to hopefully lead towards life changes. So, parte del programa están encargado, encargados de, de jóvenes de las edades de 18 a 24 para prevenir que estén afiliados con pandillas o que um, están a riesgo de estar en pandillas. Ellos crean un espacio seguro um, para que jóvenes tengan un lugar a donde ir, um, un lugar, actividades. Uh, para que el oficial Bustos no tenga más trabajo que hacer durante el día o durante la noche. Sí, sí. All right, so what do we do? So we, we train, teach, and mentor uh, the kids and the members in the program, and not necessarily kids, some of them are grown men. Uh, we offer case management services on an individualized basis based on what the service plan is, what the need is for the young men or women. Uh, we do community service as a part of the program in order to get them to buy back into the idea of serving the community as opposed to causing problems within it. Uh, we offer refer referral services to be able to partner with other organizations. That way, if it's something that they do better, that we can just refer them to these other, other places. Well, I'll stop right there before I get into a couple more. So, parte del programa uh, enseñan a jóvenes y cuando decimos jóvenes son de edades más grandes de 18 a 24, hacen servicio comunitario, pero también hacen referencias a servicios con otras agencias que también pueden ayudar a estos jóvenes. The biggest part of what it is that we do is offer the needs-based learning. Also, the draw is always recreational activities since we have the gym and the facilities to be able to entertain the members. Uh, but once they're in there, we like to get, leave them with something that's actually useful, a uh, life skills training, uh, academic tutoring. We offer free GED programming that allows our eligible members uh, 16 and 20, 16 to 24 to get the GED training classes for free and take the actual GED or high set course for free as well. So, en el programa es basado en necesidades de aprendizaje para que ellos puedan tener um, útiles que pueden usar en la vida, uh, también se enfocan en la academia y enseñan a los estudiantes o los jóvenes cómo agarrar o obtener su GED de las edades de 16 a 24 y todo es gratuito. We also do what we call inner site activities, which are focused on taking groups of young men and women from different parts of town and mixing them with other folks who are on the side of town who they may or may not like or get along with uh, in a way to create opportunities for challenging situations and conversations in order to hopefully create more peaceful interactions with folks on different sides of the city. So inner site activities are a big function that we try to do. Uh, otras actividades que hacen es interactuar con otras uh, clases de personas que a lo mejor están en otras partes de, de la ciudad para que puedan tener conversaciones diferentes y eso les puede ayudar socialmente en el futuro. Well, we recognize that the, the age of the gang member is getting younger and younger. So what we do is also early intervention groups. Uh, these take place in our clubs. Uh, they also take place at community center sites or at schools where we go out to reach out to our members and do other things as well. So early intervention groups can take place as young as eight years old all the way up through 24 year old as the members that we serve. Ellos reconocen que la edad de las personas que se están metiendo en pandillas es más joven cada año o cada día. Entonces también tratan de interactuar con los jóvenes que están en el club, uh, que puede ser de las edades más pequeñas de 8 años y otra vez como men mencionó hasta los 24. Right. The whole the whole point of the program and what we are judged off of based off of uh, how we're set up is life changes. So life changes are the backbone of the program. That's what the city wants to see, that we're making life changes with our members. Most of the life changes are uh, focused around employment, 
and education. Uh, so there are a number of life changes, but most of them are related to either getting a job and keeping it, or getting the skills to get the job and keeping it, or staying in school, progressing to the next grade, graduating high school, graduating college, et cetera, et cetera. So, el punto de este programa es de tener cambios de vida con miembros. Um, eso quiere decir que tengan un empleo o ed educación o en actividades relacionadas a mantener trabajo o que se gradúen de el colegio o de la universidad, pero que también mantengan un buen trabajo. The long-term uh, goal that the city would like for us to achieve is having our program members not engage in crime-inducing behavior. So we want to have 95%, which is challenging sometimes, 95% of our members not engage in activities that lead to arrests. So we, were, we track arrests of our members and we report those monthly in order to see if we are doing the things that we need to do to keep our, our members engaged enough and busy to where they're not having to be out in the streets committing crime. So, las metas de termo, término largo son que no sean partes de actividades que van a ser malas para, lo, para los jóvenes que estén en actividades buenas para que no estén en la calle causando problemas. Uh, COVID has created uh, issues for us just as they have with everyone else. Uh, we switched most of our programming to virtual. Uh, we're engaging with our members on Facebook. Uh, we're using private Facebook groups to continue to provide those services that we would provide in person normally. Uh, the recreational aspects of our program have, have to be slowly uh, phased back in based on CDC uh, guidelines because we're trying to keep everybody safe. Uh, but we are, I, I have Sherry Hudson here. She can kind of give you an idea of, of what they've been doing um, at the site to try to engage our members on Facebook. Um, COVID ha causado problemas y todo ha sido virtual, pero estamos um interactuando con nuestros miembros por grupos de Facebook. Así se pueden mantener informados de lo que está pasando um, en alrededor, pero la supervisora del programa puede decirnos más sobre eso. Uh, hi. Yeah, uh, I'm Sherry Hudson, and I'm the site director at Panther. I apologize for the mask, but I am on site, but hopefully you can still understand me. Um, like Jarrell said, that we are limited right now on the services that we can provide on site due to the pandemic, but we are doing our best to serve our high priority case management needs, um, our GED students, and just to keep the kids engaged and to have some fun once in a while, we do some special events. So we have movie nights, we've had um, like community service projects, like instead of going out to the Trinity Trash Bash, we'll have our own neighborhood panther trash bash anything that we can to get them in uh, we serve food um, we're going to be doing a 2k tournament so whatever we can just to, to create some fun for the kids um, so most of our services outside of the site are going to be virtually i did notice a question earlier that asked if we offer virtual tutoring we do have teachers on site so for our ged students and our high set students we can tutor them. I'm sorry, I'm going too fast. You probably need to translate that, don't you? <laughs> no problem. I'll try to catch most of, most of what you said. Okay. Um, Sherry ahorita está usando una máscara porque está en el sitio y está trabajando. Um, está virtualmente desde su trabajo, pero ahorita están haciendo haciendo la mayoría de las actividades virtualmente. Sí están haciendo trabajos de casos con individuales. Um, hay algunas actividades que sí han podido hacer en persona. Tienen uh, noches de película. Uh, hay diferentes actividades que son seguras para poder tenerlas en el sitio. Al, vino una pregunta que decía que si ofrecían tutoría virtual, um, y si lo están haciendo en este momento. Okay. We do also have virtual tutoring for our kids that are in school. So once school starts back up, we know that's going to be online and some of our kids are going to struggle with that. So our teachers are going to be available to tutor virtually. So, hay, mientras no haya escuela, hay algunas maestras que sí van a estar disponibles para hacer su día en, uh, virtualmente. The rest of our services are going to be um, out in the community. So, since we can't have very much going on at the site, we're out there doing home visits. Um, a lot of our, our kids and their families have lost their jobs. 
Um, they're in need of food. They're in need of hygiene products. Um, some of our kids are young parents and they need supplies for their babies. So um, that's what we're doing. We're trying to get those things for them and we take it out to their home. So whatever it is that they need, if we can get it for them, then we're gonna bring it to them. El resto de los servicios uh, van a ser dentro de la comunidad y es proviendo cosas o facilitando objetos que necesitan las familias y los jóvenes, uh, si son alimentos o cualquier cosa que sea, ellos van a tratar de uh, poder ofrecérselos a los jóvenes. So that's pretty much it. Basically, we're just trying to meet them where they're at, and if we can provide that resource for them, we will. Um, we are very anxious to move into our second phase, but of course, that's all contingent upon the pandemic. But once that happens, then we're hoping to provide full services on site. Ellos están ansiosos de poder moverse a la segunda fase, uh, pero durante el COVID-19 uh, van a estar tomando las precauciones necesarias, pero están muy ansiosos de poder hacer eso. Um, you do have another question. It says, if there's a, um, can you share an example of a conversation you've led with you uh, from different neighborhoods? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Can you share an example of a conversation you've led with you from different neighborhoods? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so we, one of the things that I really was proud of that we did, we partnered with, of course, we always partner with local uh, law enforcement. We had a collaboration between the parent center uh, East Side Department and our Stop Six location, um, and we were able to bring um, from from Panther, from Stop Six, and from our Poly neighborhood areas. And the, the, it was about conflict resolution. Uh, now, and, you know, you get a whole bunch of guys in the room talking about conflict resolution. Some people don't want to say anything. Some people won't say too much. Uh, but I think overall it was positive having it was about 40, 30, 40 officers. You know, they served food, uh, they were able to, to talk to the guys one-on-one, -on -one, the guys and girls one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and kind of break down some of those barriers that you know, a lot of our members have a lot of distrust for, for the police officers. But a point of, a point of the program is to show them that, you know, hey, they're just guys just like you. A lot of them are like Officer Bustos from the area that are trying to serve those areas that they serve. So I, feel, I believe that was really a powerful thing that we did. Well, yeah, so. Uh, la pregunta fue que si podía compartir un ejemplo de una conversación que ha compartido con un joven de diferentes vecindarios uh, y la respuesta fue que colaboraron con el vecindario de Stop Six y diferentes vecindarios de la área de Poly uh, y pudieron tener una conversación de resolución de conflictos, servir comida y se ve alguno de esos sitios que tienen mientras tienen conversaciones. Could you all provide your contact information in the chat so that I could place it in our Facebook Live page as well, so that if anybody else has any further questions, um, yes. we can reach out to you. Yes, um, and to be conscious of time, I'll go ahead and move to Mr. Mark Ware. Are you ready, Mark? Let me get you off of mute. There you go. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Thank you, Ruth, and uh, grateful for the other presenters this evening. Great information for all of us. Uh, my name is Mark Ware. I'm the Senior Director of Crisis Services with uh, My Health, My Resources of Tarrant County. Um, we are a rather large organization. We have uh, around 2,000 employees. Uh, we serve approximately 60,000 individuals each year. Put myself on mute instead of taking myself off. Um, él es Mark Ware, él está con MHMR. Uh, su organización es muy vasta, es muy larga y tienen alrededor de 6,000 empleados. So we have uh, pr uh, three basic uh, divisions, large divisions within our agency. I'll start with our uh, early childhood services. Um, our early childhood intervention provides comprehensive services to um, uh, to the kiddos and their families, infants and toddlers. Uh, they also have services for um, a series of, of services from eight years uh, and uh, down to birth. Uh, and we also serve multiple counties, not just Tarrant County. So there's several counties beyond Tarrant that we provide those services for. So tienen tres divisiones de bases de Invalti, um, de intervención temprana desde serie de nacimiento. 
y sirven a muchos condados, no solamente al condado de Terrence. Uh, second uh, division within our agency is our disability services. Um, our disability services provides information referral services to people with intellectual developmental disabilities and their families. Uh, we're able to provide uh, resources for them. Uh, we also have providers that offer group homes, adult day activity centers, uh, supported employment and respite services. So, la siguiente división que tienen es de disabilidades. Uh, pueden ser intelectuales. Ellos uh, facilitan recursos de empleo o también si necesitan uh, hogar como en casas de, de grupo, hogares de grupo. So, our third uh, division is the uh, area that I work in and a part of uh, behavioral health services. Uh, in behavioral health services, we have um, uh, serve adolescents and adults, uh, no real age limit on those. Uh, we provide basically outpatient mental health services is our one of our large portions of behavioral health services, uh, which includes case management, and those folks are bachelor or master level uh, individuals. Uh, we provide, uh, again, specialty services to uh, the homeless population. Uh, we provide uh, medications. They're able to see a doctor and get medications. Uh, we provide supported employment and supported housing. So, parte de los servicios de la tercera división que tiene van a ser de servicios de salud mental uh, para adolescentes y para adultos. Uh, todos los servicios van a ser, no van a ser en casa, van a ser fuera de la organización. Quiere decir que pueden ayudar con case management o uh, con casos. Todos los trabajadores en esa área van a ser de vacular o de maestría. También ayudan con la población um, indigente, con medicaciones. Ayuda con obtener empleo y con encontrar hogares permanentes. A few other services within our behavioral health division is uh, we provide benefit assistance for those that are needing uh, Medicaid or applying for Social Security. Uh, we offer uh, family support, so not just treating the individual, but also their families. Uh, we have a pretty significant uh, forensic and legal services uh, that provides um, uh, outpatient uh, restoration and uh, again for those folks that end up in jail uh, needing services while they're there. Uh, also a peer support services. So, otra parte de los servicios uh, en salud mental van a ser beneficios, asistencia con beneficios si son de Medicaid o seguro social, apoyo familiar, so no nada más asisten a los que necesitan ayuda, sino a su familia también. También tienen servicios legales y forensicos um, y también han ayudado a gente que está en la cárcel y también con apoyo con otras personas. Oh, entre personas. And we also have a pretty uh, robust uh, substance use disorder uh, services that we provide for adults and adolescents, both inpatient and outpatient services, uh, which include services for uh, mil military veterans and peer uh, services. Uh, we do, again, detox and inpatient services. También tienen un programa um, de, de toxificación si están en drogas para adultos y para adolescentes. And then uh, the area that I oversee is uh, our crisis services and um, uh, we have a 24-7 call center that we have people answering the phones 24-7, 365. Uh, you can call that number anytime. I'll provide that uh, shortly. Uh, but those uh, call center uh, staff will take your call and uh, after they uh, get information from you, they will be able to direct you to whichever appropriate services are available. Uh, including uh, respite residential. Uh, we also have a mobile crisis team that can come out and actually see people in the community. So, the area in which he works is the service of crisis. You can call at any time. They obtain information from the individual and they can inform them who they need to contact or put them in contact with the mobile crisis. And they can redirect them to the service that they need. And then lastly, we've uh, recently uh, uh, were able to start providing uh, specific uh, resources to uh, people affected by the uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Again, if someone who has uh, suffered uh, any uh, uh, 
uh, as a result of the COVID or the coronavirus, they can call that number, our, our call center, and we have additional resources and counselors that can uh, meet with them and uh, have conversations with them to help them through the coronavirus as, as well. So, ultimamente, el último servicio que están ofreciendo ahorita es el servicio, si alguien ha sido impactado por COVID, pueden llamar eh, su línea principal y pueden uh, tener recursos adicionales o consejería para esos individuos que están afectados por COVID-19. And just uh, to introduce my uh, my boss, uh, the chief of behavioral health, Ramey Hedens is on. Ramey, I don't know if you had anything else you'd like to add. Uh, no, thank you, Mark. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, good deal. I, I, no, that was great, Mark, a good overview. I just wanted to say that we have a long history. We have a program called our Mental Health Law Liaison Program, and they do work directly with Fort Worth Police Department's uh, Mental Health Unit. And so uh, a lot of times I'm sure uh, Officer Bustos is, is aware and we work with MPOs. They, they are like the backbone and always a great resource because they know the community. They know individuals and just big kudos to uh, Officer Bustos and, and other MPOs because they are they're so close to the community. It's very helpful uh, when and they can identify needs and address them and also refer to that unit and also refer to our law liaison unit if there's an individual it has mental health needs that need to be addressed. And try, what we try to, that program really is set up to try to avoid those individuals going to jail uh, and to try to keep them out of the criminal justice system, but to get their uh, behavioral health needs met. So that's all I really want to add. And thank you, Mark. Good job. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, la última parte que quería añadir es el jefe de Mr. Ward J. Ward, Jeremy, Jeremy Haiti. Y la última parte era que también tienen enlaces de salud mental que trabajan directamente con el departamento de la policía. Uh, es muy beneficioso cuando trabajan con oficiales como el oficial Bustos, que ayuden a identificar personas con necesidades de salud mental para que ellos no vayan a la cárcel o para que no estén en el sistema de, de crimen. Anything else? Any questions? Hay algunas preguntas o comentarios? Uh, y tengo pamfletes y, y boletines para ambas organizaciones. So I have uh, information from um, both of these organizations um, that I will share um, to anybody that attended. I will email it out to you, but I'll also post it on the Neighborhood Association page and share it with the board so they can share it with members. Ruth, on the, uh, I, I didn't get the number in right the first time I typed it for the call center, but I, I sent it the second time, the 335-3022. And is that the crisis Call line? center? Yes, yes, call, crisis line or call center. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. And then my direct number's there as well as my email. Perfect. And I will make sure all these get posted on the Neighborhood Association page as well. So, el número de línea um, de crisis es 817-335-3022. So, the crisis line number is 817-335-3022. Um, it looks like we have another question for you. Let's see if I can get to it. Um, it looks like it's for the Boys and Girls Club, so I'll wait till we're wrapping up towards the end so that they could ask that question. Um, la pregunta es para el sitio de Boys and Girls Club, pero voy a esperar hasta el último para poder contestar esa pregunta. Uh, next, we have Ms. Carmen Charles, and she's with Safe Haven. There we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, as she said, I'm Carmen Charles. I'm with Safe Haven of Tarrant County. And I actually do have a quick PowerPoint, and it's just really so that you can have the information. So I'm going to get that up. <clears throat> Ruth, we, we can't hear you. Sorry, I said if you go under share content, that third circle there, you should be able to pull it up. Yes, I am doing that. Right now. All right. 
So um, I'm sure um, most of you guys have heard of Safe Haven and what we are is um, a domestic violence service provider. We are the primary domestic violence service provider for Tarrant County. Um, and so we do actually, of course, most of uh, everyone knows us uh, for the emergency shelter that we offer for those that are fleeing domestic violence. So ellos son parte de una organización llamada Safe Haven y como muchos saben, ellos están um, ofrecen servicios de violencia doméstica. And I'm trying to see if it's going to let me change pages here. We might have that same situation that we had before. There we go. So um, at Safe Haven, um, like I said, we do offer uh, a number of services. We are most uh, known for our emergency shelter, um, but we actually serve the majority of our clients outside of the emergency shelter um, because not everybody needs that service. Sometimes it's just a matter of just trying to figure out what you want to do about the situation. So ellos ofrecen un número de servicios, um, incluyendo el albergue de emergencia, pero muchos de los servicios que ellos ofrecen va a ser fuera del albergue de emergencia porque es encontrar los pacientes en donde estén ellos. Domestic violence is still very prevalent in Tarrant County. Um, as it stands, one in three individuals will be impacted by domestic violence. So that's a really high number when you think about um, all of the population of Tarrant County. La violencia doméstica es muy prevalente todavía um, en el condado de Tarrant. Uno en tres personas están afectadas por violencia doméstica. Se puede ver que todavía es um, algo que todavía es muy vasto alrededor del condado. And what we do at Safe Haven is provide a wraparound, uh, wraparound services for survivors to provide the support that they need. Um, as well as work towards systemic, systemic change when it comes to intimate partner violence. So, lo que hacen en Safe Haven es muchos servicios que van alrededor de la persona y los sobrevivientes de, de um, violencia doméstica, as well también hacer cambios sistémicos dentro de esa persona o dentro de, de la organización de esa persona. Most people access our services by first giving us a call. Our crisis hotline is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it is always answered by a live advocate. La mayoría de las personas tienen acceso a su organización porque llaman la línea de crisis que está a las 24 horas del día, los siete días de la semana. So if someone is giving us a call and you are fleeing domestic violence in the moment, um, you are more than likely going to ask for emergency shelter. We will assess your situation at that time uh, on the call for emergency shelter. And we will admit you to either one of our undisclosed locations. We have an emergency shelter in Fort Worth as well as in Arlington. So if you have a crisis and you are in a situation of violence, refieren al albergue de emergencia que está en una ubicación que no uh, se le dice al público, pero una está ubicada en Fort Worth. Once you um, are approved and admitted for our emergency shelter, you will be uh, given 24 hours to get to one of our pickup locations. And once you actually enter shelter, uh, we will then uh, complete an assessment to figure out what your needs are. So, una vez que ya me le dan una ubicación y le dan 24 horas para llegar a ubicaciones para recogerlos y llevarlos al albergue, una vez que entre al albergue le hacen un um, asesor o le hacen preguntas para averiguar qué es lo que necesita o cuáles recursos necesita usted. Our emergency shelters are um, for women and children uh, up to the age of 18. That includes um, 18 year old boys as long as they are in high school. Um, and not a lot of homeless shelters uh, provide that opportunity, but we do. And so um, even though our shelters are for those, uh, for women and children or those identifying as, as female, 
um, we serve all individuals that are survivors of domestic violence. So, la organización ayuda a ambos niños y mujeres, a niños y jóvenes, hombres, hasta la edad de 18 años. Uh, pero aunque la organización se enfoca en ayudar a niños y a mujeres, también ayudan a toda la población. Um, when you enter our shelter, if you do have children, we have a children's program. Um, we offer case management services for uh, kiddos as well as we do adults. We also offer clinical therapy for adults and kiddos. Um, and then we also have a housing program with our agency. Uno de los servicios que ayudan um, una vez estén en el sistema va a ser terapia um, para adultos y para niños. And what was the last service that you offered with them? Uh, we actually have a housing program. Y tienen un programa de, uh, para poner a clientes en hogares. Um, our housing program is done through a coordinated entry process, just like uh, many of the other homeless agencies in the uh, county. Um, and so we do receive our information from Tarrant County um, Homeless Coalition. But um, the caveat for our housing program is that you must be a survivor of domestic violence. So, el proceso para entrar a este programa es similar a muchos de los albergues alrededor um, del condado, pero uno de los requerimientos es que sea una víctima de violencia doméstica. Um, for our non-residential services, um, generally you are going to, again, give us a call through our crisis hotline. Um, so, if you have a safe place to, to stay, um, you may still just need that support, wraparound support that we can provide. And so that's what we what we provide for you in our non-residential side of the agency. Para esas personas que no estén buscando residencia o albergue, uh, pueden llamar al mismo número de crisis y también les ofrecerán re recursos um, que le pueden ayudar a su persona. Um, our crisis uh, hotline is actually um, under our crisis and outreach services. Um, but from there, we do provide again uh, case management or that non um, or that excuse me that supportive resource counseling. Um, we have a uh, domestic violence high risk team in Tarrant County, and uh, Safe Haven is the coordinator of that. And then um, we also have a project that we oversee um, that we partner with uh, DFPS C CPS. Um, on that particular project to, to provide services for those families that have been impacted by domestic violence. Otros servicios que van a ofrecer es uh, el manejo de casos con servicios de apoyo. Uh, también tienen un equipo de, de personas que están a riesgo de violencia doméstica y también uh, trabajan con la organización de CPS para, por otros proyectos en la organización. Um, and then we have some clients that just um, are just in need of some clinical services. So we do offer clinical therapy, individual and support group. Um, we offer children's therapy, play therapy that starts at the age of four. And everything that we do, all the services that we offer are um, for our survivors are trauma informed. Um, so we, our work is through the trauma that you have experienced. So, la mayoría de los clientes que ven uh, muchas veces están buscando ayuda clínica o so ofrecen consejería para individuales y apoyo um, para los niños ofrecen terapia uh, de juego y también todos los servicios que ofrecen de consejería van a ser basados en información de trauma. Um, we have some individuals that are just in need of legal services and we do have a legal team. Uh, right now, we only have one staff attorney. Um, but that uh, our staff attorney can assist you with uh, either filing for a protective order, if that's something that, you know, a survivor is needing, or, um, you know, family law is what our attorneys practice, so um, custody or divorce, things of that nature. Um, también ofrecen un servicio um, de ley si necesitan um, asistencia uh, con un abogado, hacen órdenes de protección, pero también se enfocan en 
la ley de familia si necesitan ayuda con custodia o con un divorcio. And then when we talk about um, just kind of our systemic changes that we want to see, because we know that domestic violence is a public safety and health issue. And so it systemically, we want it to, to go away. And so the only way that we can do that is to really get into our community and our systems. And so um, we want to stop domestic violence from, from ever happening. And that starts with our littles. And so we actually do have a prevention department Uh, they actually go out and they provide um, curriculum-based programs from, uh, for kiddos all the way from, you know, the littles to, um, you know, teenagers and talking about uh, dating violence. So um, it is appropriate based on their age level. So, saben que el primer problema de violencia doméstica es un problema sistémico y es un problema de salud pública que ellos quieren que desaparezca. Uh, y por eso están trabajando con la comunidad para crear ese cambio en el sistema con un departamento de prevención. Trabajan con los niños pequeños hasta con adolescentes con un currículo basado en su edad. And we also know that when it comes to making systemic changes, that um, we cannot count out the person who is actually doing the hurting, and that is the offender. And so we do actually have an offender program Uh, it is uh, our, we call it Partner Abuse Intervention Program. Um, it's, a, it's a BIP program, but we changed the name just to remove that, um, that negative stigma when you hear the term batterer. And so um, it is the only service that we offer in which you have to pay, and it's generally going to be a court-ordered service. Um, también reconocen que parte del problema en Violencia doméstica también va a ser un ofendor. So, tienen un programa uh, para gente que es el que está ofendiendo en la situación de violencia doméstica. Y actualmente este programa es basado en si, la, si es pedido por la corte varias veces. We have to hold the offenders accountable for their actions um, so that they don't continue this pattern. We know that domestic violence is a, um, it's a cycle um, and it's about power and control. And so we have to hold the offenders accountable as well so that they don't um, offend again. Um, it is, we have four accredited, um, you know, uh, BIP providers here in Tarrant County. Uh, Safe Haven is one of them. The others are 24 weeks. Ours is 27 weeks, and so most judges are going to order for our, um, our services, our vendor services. So, sabemos que eh, violencia doméstica es un ciclo que puede seguir pasando uh, varias veces y tenemos que tener esos ofendores y, y ponerle un paro a este ciclo. Uh, en el condado de Tarrant hay cuatro acreditaciones para programas similares. De, los otros son de 24 semanas, este va a ser de 27 semanas, son la mayoría de los programas que el juez dirige o de individuos que el juez dirige a este programa va a ser para Safe Haven porque son de 27 semanas. So what can you do if you know that if you or someone else um, is experiencing intimate partner violence? Uh, the first thing is going to be listen. Um, so if somebody is sharing with you that they um, are in a relationship that, and, and they may not necessarily say that, oh, I'm experiencing domestic violence, but um, that they have concerns that their relationship is not healthy, listen and validate those concerns and fears. So, ¿qué puede hacer alguien que está en esa situación de violencia doméstica o que está escuchando a alguien? Um, es escuchar y aprender de ellos, uh, porque eso es lo que realmente necesitan en ese momento. Um, here at Safe Haven, we always start by believing. And so if you tell us that you're experiencing something, we're going to believe exactly what it is that you're saying. So en el programa, el, el primer caso es creer lo que está diciendo la persona. So eso es lo que van a hacer ellos, es creerle a la persona que está uh, buscando ayuda. Um, we're going to always encourage that you call law enforcement if it's applicable. Um, and we know that sometimes it's not necessarily the safest thing to do. Um, and so as advocates, we understand that. 
la primera cosa que ellos van a pedir es que uh, llame al departamento de policía, pero saben que a veces eso no es posible. Son como advocates o como personas que um, están ahí para el cliente, ellos van a entender que no puede llamar. And what we do is that we safety plan with our survivors um, so that we can help come up with a plan in the event that they do need help and are not able to make that call themselves. So, parte de eso también van a hacer un plan de seguridad para ese cliente para asegurarse que tenga todos los recursos y ellos puedan hablar a la policía si ellos no lo pueden hacer. We always encourage you to please give us a call. We understand um, a domestic violence. We meet survivors where they are. Um, and so you may be calling at a moment where you're ready to flee and are looking for emergency shelter. Or you may be giving us a call simply because you don't know if your relationship is healthy and it, whether or not it is considered to be domestic violence. Um, si necesitan servicios, por favor, comuníquense con Safe Haven. Ellos entienden que a lo mejor les estén llamando cuando estén en una situación de crisis y tienen que huir en donde están. Pero también entienden que a veces pueden estar llamando para uh, recibir recursos o saber si están en una relación que realmente sí es de violencia doméstica o no. Um, again, our crisis hotline is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and then our crisis and outreach department Um, along with the two emergency shelters, we also have two resource centers, uh, one in Arlington and one in Fort Worth. Our crisis and outreach department, which is our, um, like I said, kind of your segue into services for the agency, is housed in our Fort Worth resource department, which is at one safe place at 1100 Hemp Hill Street. So, uh, tienen dos ubicaciones de albergue de recursos. Uno es en, está en la calle de ejemplo, pero muchos de uh, los recursos que ofrecen va a ser sobre llamando la línea de crisis, que está las 24 horas al día, 7 días a la semana. Did you provide the crisis hotline number in the chat? Absolutely. Um, if anybody needs to walk in for services um we are available at our fort worth resource center monday through friday from 8 a.m to 7 p.m uh one safe place the building is actually um right now they're they're closing at five o'clock um and so we're going to encourage you to contact our crisis hotline we're meeting with any anybody so anybody that's concerned about um covid We're doing all of our services remotely, except for, obviously, if you're coming in for emergency shelter. Tienen un centro de recursos que está ubicado en Fort Worth um, de 8 a.m. a 7 p.m. Y el, la ubicación que está ubicada en Hempio ahorita están cerrando temprano. Y cualquier persona que tenga um, preocupaciones de COVID-19 puede llamar a la línea de crisis si están Uh, juntando con personas virtualmente, pero si necesitan un albergue en emergencia, eso lo están haciendo en persona, obviamente. Um, okay. I was saying that's my information, so, um, and I'm going to actually send this information to you, Ruth, and I can also get it translated um, in Spanish as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, and I'll be sharing that with the neighborhood. Perfect. And I actually, any materials that we have, if you guys want some, just let me know. Um, we have um, plenty of things that we can give out for survivors or those just wanting to know more information, um, even, you know, as far as how to save people plan. And uh, I have both, all of those things in English and in Spanish as well. Perfect. Don't see any questions for you right now. Um, if you could just provide that crisis line number in the chat. And um, the question that we had previously for the Boys and Girls Club um, is, if you're still enrolling for pre-K, we're not in the area, but we're about five minutes away from the location, and I'd like my daughter to go there. This may not be exactly for you, um, but I can get them in touch with the principal. I don't know if that's something that you will do. Yeah, if, if they want to just uh, contact me with my email, I can get that to the right person who can answer oh, that. Please. Perfect. I'll put that information in the chat. Too.
Any other questions? It doesn't look like we have any that are coming in. Um, Council Member Zeta, um, do you have anything that you would like to add? And I can actually make you a panelist if you have anything that you'd like to add. Hello. I would just like to thank everybody. I really appreciate all the effort that people put into bringing these resources to the community and I appreciate the time that you've taken. You all do really important work and I've been honored to work with you in capacities before. So thanks for being a part of this neighborhood improvement process. Thank you all again for joining us. I don't see any more questions coming in, uh, but the video is going to be on all the social media platforms, including the Rosemont area website. So if neighbors do want to see this at a later time, um, it'll be available to them. So if any questions come up, I'll make sure to redirect those either to one of your organizations or to uh, Officer Bustos. So thank you all again for uh, joining us. And we'll be in contact. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. And sorry, Susan, I didn't see your question until now, but I'll uh, make sure that it gets answered. Uh,